ਸੋ ਇੱਕ ਵਾਰ ਫਿਰ ਕਰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਜੀ ਆਪ ਸਭ ਦਾ ਹਾਰਦਿਕ ਸਵਾਗਤ ਅੱਜ ਦੇ ਇਸ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਵਿੱਚ ਪ੍ਰੀਮੀਅਰ ਕ੍ਰਿਸਟੀ ਕਲਾਰਕ ਨਾਲ ਗੱਲਬਾਤ ਚੱਲ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਅਤੇ ਬ੍ਰੇਕ ਤੋਂ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਦੋ ਰਣੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਮਹੱਤਵਪੂਰਨ ਗੱਲਾਂ ਕਹੀਆਂ ਕਿ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਮੁੱਖ ਮਕਸਦ ਪੋਲਿਟਿਕਸ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਇਹੀ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਦੀ ਸਹੀ ਤਰੀਕੇ ਨਾਲ ਪ੍ਰਤੀਨਿਧਤਾ ਕੀਤੀ ਜਾ ਸਕੇ ਅਤੇ ਸਹੀ ਪਾਲਿਸੀਆਂ ਲਿਆ ਕੇ ਪਰਿਵਾਰਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਸਟਰੋਂਗ ਬਣਾਇਆ ਜਾ ਸਕੇ ਆਓ ਕੁਝ ਹੋਰ ਗੱਲਬਾਤ ਕਰਨੇ ਸੋ ਬਿਫੋਰ ਦਾ ਬ੍ਰੇਕ ਲਾਈਕ ਯੂ ਮੈਂਸ਼ਨ ਦੋਸ ਨਿਊ ਇਨੀਸ਼ੀਏਟਿਵਸ ਵਿਚ ਯੂ ਹੈਵ ਵਰ ਥਿੰਕਿੰਗ ਆਰ ਰੀਪਿੰਗ ਰਿਜ਼ਲਟਸ ਬਟ ਵਾਈ ਡੂ ਯੂ ਫੀਲ ਦੈਟ ਦਾ ਪੋਲ ਰਿਜ਼ਲਟਸ ਵਿਚ ਆਰ ਕਮਿੰਗ ਦੇ ਆਰ ਸ਼ੋਇੰਗ ਦਾ ਲਿਬਰਲ ਪਾਰਟੀ ਗੋਇੰਗ ਡਾਊਨ ਐਂਡ ਡਾਊਨ any particular reason you feel or is the people are the people just thinking that what gordon campbell did or some of the hst thing or some of the other policies which he introduced is still uh, much more lurking in their minds that they're not seeing the positivity which has been brought by you because i i think polling is a broken business <laughs> i think that um you know you see what happened in alberta they every poll called it wrong until right. the night before the election. Mm-hmm. So I just, you know, I I don't put a lot of stock in that stuff. Right. I think the you know, it it is true that the poll that counts is the one on election day. And you know, after we've been through 28 days of a campaign, mm-hmm. people will have been talking about and focused on where they want the economy to go. Right. They'll be talking about, you know, the 61,000 new jobs that have been created. They'll be talking about low taxes mm-hmm. and the need to continue to attract investment. Right. They'll be talking about wanting to make sure government stays out of their pocket and makes it, you know, d- stops making it harder for them to get ahead. And really that is the question people will be asking themselves and being a- and answering when they walk into the polls. Mm-hmm. In May 2013, they're going to be saying, "Do I want a British Columbia?" that's fiscally responsible that's going to keep my taxes low mm-hmm. that's going to make sure that there's a job for me and my kids or do I want a government that's going to take us down the road that Greece went down mm-hmm. or that France may be going down right i think that's the question that people will have on their minds when they get to election day and we won't know the answer to that till we get there <laughs> absolutely and that time will tell so now because uh, uh, you know it's about a year left for the election so what are your future plans and how are you trying to bring up those issues which you feel that need to be worked upon well one of the things that i'm doing is i'm traveling a lot so okay. you know today you found me here in vancouver but mm-hmm. i'm going to be in kamloops i'm going to be in fort st john dawson creek right. i'll be in golden i'm going to be in victoria i'll be all over duncan surrey coquitlam mm-hmm. burnaby you name it i'm going to be traveling and talking to people directly right and i think one of the most important things that a premier must do is to try and stay in touch with the people and that's something that i really learned when i was on the radio because mm-hmm. anybody anybody no matter right. who you were could phone up and talk to me absolutely tell me what was on their heart and i need to give people the chance to continue to do that so that's what i'm going to do this summer for the next couple of months well that's a very important thing what you have touched because that's what it is many times what happens is when politicians are not able to get the exact thinking of the people then problems start so do you think that this thing you are working upon and you're reaching to the people i think i hope so i right. mean you know i'll see I, i'm already out there talking to people finding mm-hmm. out what people are concerned about because you're right when politicians stop listening mm-hmm. they start to make dumb decisions right. frankly and you know i'm i know i'm going to make decisions people won't necessarily agree with but i sure want to have the benefit of the best ideas and views of every british columbian i can i can find right. and i think that makes our province better because you know what people are sick of politicians who just don't Absolutely. listen and so i'm really trying to change that and that's why i let British Columbia's Choose Family Day. Right. You know, we did a we took it on the internet. 30 over 30,000 people participated. Right. And Family Day was a date that was chosen mm-hmm. not by me. Right. but by the people. And I think we should do more of that stuff. Right. And Premier also some of the policies which were started by Mr. Gordon Campbell they are still continuing and especially it's becoming uh, quite expensive to live over here and especially the Vancouver area is quite expensive and mm-hmm. it's becoming difficult for the common people to uh, you know even meet their ends met and they have to work and many a times they don't get the job of their choice and especially as far as the immigrants are concerned because their credentials are not recognized and many times they cannot go in the field they want to go mm-hmm. so uh, you are aware of these things also and especially with the EI uh, reforms which the Canadian uh, federal government has brought that also will have an impact on the lot of immigrants so are you aware of these and also are you thinking of doing something on towards these things also i am aware of them and i'm concerned about them mm-hmm. you know immigration is so important it's what's built our province right if without immigrants british columbia wouldn't exist mm-hmm. 
And we have to remember, I think we do remember that. Right. I think sometimes the federal government forgets. Mm -hmm. So we are working hard to remind them. John Yap set up a, a, a very successful immigration task force right. to, talk, to think about all the things that we need the federal government to do, which would basically loosen up immigration, right. allow more immigrants into our province. For heaven's sakes, you know, we have a, we're going to have a million job openings right. in the next 10 years. We can't fill them all. Mm -hmm. We need more people coming to our province. And then when we get here, we should let them work right. at the jobs they're trained for. So mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a, really big, uh, a really big focus of mine. And, you know, I mean, that's, you know, when I, when I raised the minimum wage, that was about trying to make it a little bit easier for people to get ahead. When I cut the rate, the hydro, mm -hmm. uh, directed that they, they, they cut increase the rate, rate, hydro rate increase in half, right. that was about trying to make things more affordable for families. Mm -hmm. Getting rid of air care, another thing to make it more affordable for ca families. So we're trying to do these things one by one, mm -hmm. recognizing it is tough out there. Right. And people, you know, it's not just low taxes. That's good, that's important, but there are a lot of other things we need to do. And also, are you thinking about the carbon tax also? Because what we are finding right now, a lot of people are going to the states for uh, gas and uh, grocery and all that, and that is impacting the economy of British Columbia. So in the coming months, do you plan to review this, or you think that this was the right tax, which is the right thing which needs to be there? Well, you know, my answer to that is both, in a right. way. Um, we are reviewing the carbon tax. Right. And what we want to do is, you know, first recognizing it was a world-leading right. change. And we, or at least a, a continent-leading change. And um, it did a lot of good in growing different sectors of our economy, like the clean technology sector. Mm -hmm. And um, it actually, you know, we got the government at the time lowered personal income taxes, lowered business taxes at the same time that it raised the carbon tax. Right. So everybody in, ended up paying about the same, mm -hmm. although some people paid a little bit more and some a little bit less. Right. Having said that, though, it wasn't perfect. And, you know, I mean, it was, uh, nobody else in Canada had done it at the time. Right. Of course, it's not going to be perfect. So that's why we're reviewing it, to see how we can fix those parts of it that don't work for people. Not to get rid of it. Right. Um, but we want to fix it. The last thing I would say is we are not planning to raise it again. Right, great. The last increase that was planned by the government before I got here mm -hmm. has happened. Mm -hmm. I am not going to bring another one in. Okay, great. And uh, towards the end, there's much more to talk, but time doesn't permit. So towards the end, the South Asians, and especially the Indo-Canadians and the Pakistani Canadians have been longtime supporters of the Liberal Party. What would be your message to them? My message to them would be thank you. And not a thank you for helping us in, in our politics or in the BC Liberal Party. Thank you for building this country. Because, you know, immigrants to Canada and South Asian immigrants to Canada have made an outsized contribution to making us who we are, mm -hmm. particularly here in British Columbia. Right. So I think my message would be thank you, your entrepreneurial spirit, your love of family, those things are lessons that we all need to remind ourselves right. are important for building our country. It was a pleasure having you. We have lots of more questions, but in the coming months, definitely we would love to have you more on the show so that uh, you can share your views with the people and we can bring their thinking to you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Satsrikal. Satsrikal.